start telling you about this research, which aims to help children with autism to, converse, uh, to uh, engage better in a conversation and to use better their language in a social way. So <clears throat> we, uh, I conducted research with my colleague, Professor Schoen from computer science at Monmouth University. And we thought that we would try if uh, children with autism speak better with a robot than with a peer. Why do we do this research? Because we uh, know that children with autism try to tend to isolate themselves, not answer questions if they are asked, don't uh, respond to their name, and thank you so much. <coughs> and um, so we uh, also know that um, they have a fascination for objects. So whereas with peers and with children uh, like them, they have a different uh, time in uh, uh, getting engaged and playing with them and talk to them, uh, they can uh, be uh, captivated by objects, especially technological tools and computers for hours. So I thought that maybe proposing the child a conversation with a robot speaking in a human voice that would help them start the conversation and start talking and answering the questions. And then they could actually generalize this skill once obtained to other contexts like the school <coughs> or, or the uh, family. So uh, basically what are the problems of the children with autism in language and using uh, language in a, um, in a social way? They, are, uh, they have problems in uh, um, also nonverbal communication, so looking at people in the eyes, um, smiling while they're talking, taking turns, so waiting for their time to um, answer and um, answering with an appropriate uh, topic. So we call these skills pragmatic language skills. So the first goal of this study is to actually uh, rehabilitate pragmatic language skills in children with autism. The second weak um, ability in children with autism is engaging in uh, emotional exchanges. So when they talk to people, they seem to be um, um, not, uh, uh, they seem not to engage in an emotional exchange and uh, they don't resonate with the emotions of the other person. They maybe do not understand the feelings of the other person, or they are not able to analyze their own feelings, or to answer, to express their emotions with speech. So this is the other goal that I wanted to uh, achieve, uh, to let them actually express their emotions better with the robot. So, <clears throat> uh, what uh, did we do? We in, uh, recorded uh, the speech of children uh, who are native speakers of Italian because I uh, conducted this part of the research in Italy at the, clean, at the speech pathology clinic uh, directed by a friend of mine, Dr. Magda Di Renzo. The clinic is the Istituto di Ortofonologia in Rome. So they gave us uh, kindly access to their uh, patients and we could record nine children with autism and um, and six normal children, children in normal development. So um, what, uh, um, what did I uh, use in this experiment to help the children express themselves? Some sentences that are designed to elicit emotions in the, in the, um, in the listener, in the person who has to respond. Sentences like, do you want to be my friend? or uh, how do you feel when you see your mom, um, do you like football, um, do you, uh, are you happy when you go out with your dad. So um, children are actually asked to answer and hopefully they will um, express how they feel and um, uh, start uh, being, uh, gaining contact with these emotions. So what children? Uh, children between the age of five and 15, and um, children who don't have other uh, cognitive impairments, uh, but just autism. These are children who are more verbal, so more functional. We know that autism is a spectrum, so there is a variety of symptoms. 
children are very different, but we chose the ones who can engage in a conversation. So um, what do we analyze? We analyze how much they engage in the conversation and um, uh, whether the intonation, uh, the prosody of the conversation is actually appropriate in their speech. Why? Because through the intonation, the melody of speech, we express actually our emotions. So it's not enough that we say the appropriate words, but also the intonation is important. So um, how did we uh, run this experiment? We chose uh, a robot that would look like a toy. So it's a mind, mind storm Lego robot, very easy to build. <coughs> it was built by the graduate students in the computer science department in, at Monmouth University. And uh, in this case, it has a, a humanoid shape, but we tried different shapes. And what does it do? So it speaks with the uh, voice of a child. What I did is I re recorded some sentences spoken by a real child asking these questions. And um, I, we uploaded the sentences in the memory of the, of the robot. So basically there is not a synthesizer. The ro it's very simple. There is not a speech recognizer. It's just a, a, playing, uh, the, the robot is just playing sentences that are um, uploaded in its memory at a few seconds interval to let, let the children, um, um, to leave the ch to the children some time to answer and figure out the answer. So what it does, the robot walks uh, towards the child, has some vision sensors, identifies the child and stops at approximately 15 centimeters and then starts uh, talking. Um, so <coughs> how did we organize the experiment? In the first phase, the uh, child um, who is tested speaks to the robot. So the robot says, asks a question, do you want to be my friend? Um, do you uh, like candy? And the child interacts, so we will see how. Then uh, we remove the robot and we actually uh, take in the room a real boy who is asking the same questions. What do we want to, <coughs> um, what do we want to test? First, whether there are patterns in the conversational interaction with the robot. This is because the autism is a puzzle and we don't know how to treat it appropriately because every child has different symptoms. <clears throat> so it would be very useful if we could find some patterns, especially in verbal exchanges, so we could target our therapies to those patterns. So this is the first time I was looking for. Second thing <coughs> was to, um, I was testing whether the children with autism would respond differently from children in normal development to the interaction with the robot and the boy. And third, I wanted um, to see also uh, if um, the children, uh, of course, if the children with autism um, speak better, more easily to the robot than to the child. So in that case, we can use the robot as a therapy. So um, what did we find actually? We found that I found some patterns of uh, interaction. So this is a good, result. So as I said, this is a preliminary study on children who speak Italian. Nine children. So I'll tell you the patterns. So the first, <coughs> uh, the first pattern is uh, used by two uh, children. They're all boys, so I will use masculine pronouns. Um, <coughs> as you know, there is a ratio of four to one of boys to girls for ch children with autism, so it's easier to find uh, boys participants. So first pattern is echolalia. So <coughs> echolalia is a, a type of response that children with autism have, which means they imitate the person, the, what the speaker said. So the robot asks, um, do you want to be my friend? And they repeat, do you want to be my friend? So they do it, however, in two ways in terms of prosody, of intonation. The first <coughs> is just repeating the intonation that the, the robot said. And the second is to speak in an aphonic voice, which is like this, so like a whisper. How is it produced? 
it means that you are not vibrating your vocal folds. So since the melody of speech is generated by moving the vocal folds, it means that they eliminate prosody. So these children, <coughs> in some way, do not really engage in a conversation because they repeat what the robot just said, and they do it without the prosody. So you see that actually it's the, um, the uh, uh, form of intention to communicate in some way that is um, uh, damaged in this case. So they don't have the concept of exchanging uh, speech in a conversation, but at least these children express something verbally <coughs> with the robot because with the real child, they would not talk to him okay, at all. So it's, it's something. The second pattern <coughs> was actually um, to um, use some uh, stereotyped sentences and intonation. So they, when the, child, the robot asks, uh, do you want to be my friend? <coughs> they would repeat, hello, hello, as if they were on the phone and they were trying to understand, hear the other person. So they would, they would keep saying, hello, 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 always the same, many times, two of them. And um, I have to say, I also found this in different languages. I tested this in different languages, they do the same. They say, hello, hello, in Italian, pronto, pronto, and they repeat the same intonation over and over again. Again, this is not an, an uh, engagement in conversation, but it's some kind of acknowledgement that somebody has talked to them and they are trying to exchange some speech. Again, these children with the real boy do not do that. They, uh, they don't engage at all. So one of these children also, after this <coughs> first interaction, he stepped away, removed himself from the robot, and went to a dollhouse that was in the room and started, uh, started playing a game, narrating the game to himself and talking to himself, actually. This is another pattern that we find in children with autism. They talk to themselves. So he was telling himself, move the chair, Oh, there is somebody coming in. You have to move the. You have to move. Um, you know, open the door. So he was talking to himself, always with a high, very high pitch and stereotyped intonation. So this is again, it's not a way to interact in a conversation, but it's speaking, at least. Huh? So <clears throat> the other uh, way, um, the other uh, pattern that I found was. Um, the other children were more verbal, so other two children answered the questions, but with monosyllables, so very short, or two word sentences. Too short to find an intonation, and uh, it's not really a conversation, but at least they give an answer. So they acknowledge they have an interlocutor, somebody to talk to. So that's a step ahead, let's say. And uh, in this case, they, these children answer differently to the questions with the robot and with the boy. So they answer all the questions with the robot, but only some of them with the boy. So it's still an improvement. You know? the, the final pattern is for the rest of the boys, they were more fluent in speech, so they would answer with more words and with the, an intonation that seemed okay. <coughs> and. Um, However, in the end of the sentence, the intonation became a lullaby, like a little sing-song. So they changed the rhythm. The rhythm is also connected to the melody of speech, so all of them did that. So in some way, there is a control of prosody, which is a different uh, aspect of speech than words that is uh, affected by autism and needs to be uh, rehabilitated. This is also something that wasn't studied before, so it's a new uh, finding and uh, prosody, we think it's uh, processed in the right half of the brain, whereas speech in the left uh, hemisphere. So <clears throat> we have some new information from this experiment. And so <clears throat> I wanted just to say in the end that the children with autism responded differently to the robot and to the boy. Children no, in normal development, they answered exactly the same sentences to the robot and the boy. The two tasks were one after the other, so they remembered the questions, of course, but I noticed that they have used exactly the same answers. So in, I think <clears throat> as a tentative interpretation is that uh, we can say that when a robot speaks with the voice of a boy, 
the children in normal development think it's a ball. So they would answer as if it was a person, exactly like they would answer to the real boy. But children with autism think that actually is a different entity. And so they answer differently. And in some cases, the less verbal, so the less functional children actually had some kind of uh, start in the conversation. So anything is good, you know, as a, an improvement in therapy. So we will start from there to try to improve the prototype and try to make it better so it can elicit more interactions and hopefully there is some improvement in the future for these skills in the children. Thank you very much. Thank you.